jeez, with so many divisional matchups, you would have thought this weekend would have been the divisional round. <laughs> Listen, that joke is about as good as these matchups. Grossy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packcast, a podcast where you don't have to do Packers. But it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. There are only 13 games left in this NFL season. And the Green Bay Packers are not one of them. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Grossy, and today we are going to be breaking down and predicting each game in the super wild card weekend. And I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of meh matchups. And that might be because there's a lot of meh teams this year. But we're still going to go through. I think that there's some potential great games on the horizon this weekend. But let's get down to it. Last week, I went 10 and 6, 173 and 96 on the season. Here are the games that I got correct. Here are the games that I got wrong. Looking at you, Sunday Night Football. No, I'm not over it. But that's okay. I'm not going to let my heartbreak influence these predictions because I am a professional. So starting off with game number one, you got the Seattle Sea. Who shouldn't be there? They shouldn't be there. What did they do to earn it? Oh, Geno Smith is having a nice season. He's the comeback player of the year. What about Trevor Lawrence? He was with the head coach that was kicking people. He was kicking them, and he's grinding all up on him. He should be comeback player of the year. But no! You know what? You deserve to have a great offseason because you fleeced the Broncos with the Russell Wilson trade. But this, you shouldn't be here. You barely beat the Rams and the Lions, if anybody should be here. Taking on the San Francisco 49ers in a divisional matchup in which, uh, yeah, there's some to be desired about this. Some people are saying like, hey, maybe, you know, it's, it's tough to beat a team three times. Though, if there's any team that could do it, I think it's the San Francisco 49ers. And hell, no matter what kind of scooter Pete Carroll is on, I imagine he's going to be scooting away from this game after a loss because I think the 49ers are just going to decimate them. Now, I will say, for the Seahawks to have a chance, Geno Smith needs to play really efficient, near-perfect football against that suffocating defense. On top of that, the Seahawks' entire offense really revolves around getting Kenneth Walker going, and they're going to need to do that against the 49ers. Seahawks are finally getting hot again, but... That beast of a 49ers defense. Back, Steve! Back! I warn ya! Yeah. The way to beat the 49ers is to score a ton of points early to make them try and come back, but yeah, not many teams have succeeded in that endeavor so far this season. Unfortunately, being played in Santa Clara, I don't think the Seahawks are going to be able to get it done. So because of that, 49ers win. Following that, you got arguably the best matchup of the weekend. You got the L.A. Chargers taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> and why do I think this could be the best game? Well, because you have two offenses who could be really potent, two defenses who have kind of been up and down all season. And honestly, like, you kind of just rooting for the Jaguars a little bit at this point. And Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler and all the receiving weapons are fun to watch too. And plus, it's like... What dumb move is Brandon Staley going to make next? Makes for entertaining television. The Chargers, the second team from the AFC West to head into the postseason this year. And some are saying that they are the dark horse because if that defense can get some pressure at opposing quarterbacks, Derwin James back there, they could be a problem. And as we talked about, they have a very high-powered offense. Meanwhile, the Jaguars, they knocked off the Tennessee Titans last week and... Yeah, I imagine Derrick Henry was like this after getting 30 carries and yet still losing to the Jaguars. What more do you want from me? <laughs> but the Jaguars' defense was what came in clutch. They got that fumble, returned it for a touchdown, and their defense, especially their defensive line, has kind of had ebbs and flows all season. Sometimes they get after the quarterback, sometimes they don't. But taking a look at the offense, Trevor Lawrence has done really well this season. He's taken a big step in his sophomore year, and I imagine for his first playoff game being played at home, the atmosphere is going to be pretty damn electric. 
I did want to actually pick the Jaguars in the upset here, but I am going to go with the LA Chargers just because I believe in that offense a tiny bit more. Trevor Lawrence the past couple of weeks has been fine. He hasn't been bad by any stretch of the imagination. I just think the Chargers can put up more points. So because of that, the Chargers win. Following that, you got another divisional matchup. You got the Miami Dolphins taking on the Buffalo Bills. The Dolphins, uh, they might be dead without Mostert and Tua. The Dolphin is dead. Did you know this? Yes. Uh, no, I did not know that. That's terrible. Died in a car accident. <laughs> the Jets and the Dolphins put on one of the worst games all year in week 18, in which it was just ugly. And I'd be a lot more excited for this game, but unfortunately it was announced this morning that Tua will not start against the Bills this Sunday, meaning it's going to likely be Teddy Bridgewater, maybe Skylar Thompson. But either way, this game is probably not going to be as good as the last one because not only will there be no snowballs, there will also be no Tua. And it's really a shame because I would love to see a full-strength Dolphins team with all of their weapons go up against the Bills, who I think their defense is definitely susceptible to really good offenses. But without those primary weapons, especially Tua, I just don't know how the Dolphins win this game. Meanwhile, the Bills, they were in a battle with the New England Patriots. Mac Jones was able to light them up a tiny bit before the defense kind of took over and Josh Allen, well, you know, did what Josh Allen does, and he was just slinging the ball. You do have to cut down on the turnovers that the Bills make, but right now the Bills are obviously one of the favorites to go to the Super Bowl. We're all kind of just waiting for next week and the week after to see if we're going to get that bills Bengals showdown and eventually a bills Chiefs showdown. But as of right now, I think without Tua, the Bills should be able to stomp the Dolphins and get the easy win. Following that, you got another Dark Horse game of the week. You got the New York Giants taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Someone in the comments said, I am dreading the time that Tom is going to be streaming the Vikings being removed from the playoffs. And for the first time in a few days, I smiled. The Giants didn't start anybody last week against the Eagles and nearly came back with Davis Webb. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Vikings, they beat the Bears last week after getting the crap slapped out of them by the Green Bay Packers. Best win of the year besides against the Cowboys. And this game could be really, really good. A few weeks ago, these two teams battled and it came down to a last second field goal that the Vikings actually got. And the Giants, listen, oh, this hurts. I'm rooting for you just because I hate the Vikings so much. And I know the Giants have given me so much heartbreak over the years, especially in the postseason. But I want the Giants to win. Brian Dable has done an amazing job coaching this team. In my eyes, he is coach of the year. And Daniel Jones, he's been having a great season as well as Saquon Barkley. I think they still have a ton of injuries, which is problematic. And I just think that the defense... I don't know if they're going to be able to contain the offensive firepower of the Vikings. But then again, the Vikings are one of the biggest boom or bust teams in the postseason. So I would not be surprised if this comes down to a last second field goal again. So although I would really like the Vikings to lose, they probably won't because we know they have outside forces working with them. I just want to say that I'm a huge fan. I always have been. And so because of that, Satan's team gets another win. Then you got the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. So this is what Olivia Rodrigo was singing about in that song, Deja Vu. Because we just saw this matchup between the Ravens and the Bengals. It wasn't a pretty game. And I imagine this weekend's not going to be pretty either. Lamar Jackson trending in the wrong direction. It's not likely he is going to play. Still having issues with his knee. So that means that Tyler Huntley would be up on deck. And I think, you know, with their defense, it'll be competitive. But I got to imagine this is what it's going to look like after the Bengals beat the Ravens again. Oh, look at that! You fell for that too! I can't believe it, man! The Bengals just have a really good football team. They have a good run game with Joe Mixon. They have so many weapons. And I just think it's going to be too much for the Ravens. Again, it's a divisional game. You never know. And if Lamar Jackson was playing, I'd be looking forward to this game much more than I am. But... Unfortunately, without him, I think this might be a dud and the Bengals win. And finally, on Monday Night Football, you got the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Actual question, which of these two teams has the most lackluster entrance into the postseason? Is it the Buccaneers who clinched it back in week 17 with a fourth quarter comeback against the Panthers, then started some of their starters for a hot second and then pulled them in and lost to the Falcons and they don't even have a winning record? Or is it the Cowboys who just got beaten by the freaking Washington Commanders in an embarrassing game? I don't know. Talk about boom or bust. The Cowboys are right up there with the Vikings. Their defense is something that I didn't think you'd have to worry about all season, but you've seen it time and time again. That is something that you definitely need to be worried about. Their pass rush can be lethal and could get after Tom Brady, especially going up against a vulnerable offensive line. But I just don't have faith in the Cowboys. Dak Prescott, he hasn't been playing his best football this season, turning the ball over. If they can't get the run game going against the Buccaneers defense, which is not the same, it could be a problem. And on top of that, the Cowboys have to play on the road and the Buccaneers get some undeserved home field advantage. Cannons and all. Hey, that's not fair. Cowboys couldn't afford cannons. Meanwhile, the Buccaneers, two weeks ago, Mike Evans went off, had 200 yards, had three touchdowns. You kind of saw that connection with Brady again, and you can't doubt Tom Brady in the postseason. But the Buccaneers are not a good football team. So you have a Cowboys team who can be really good, but also can be awful, and you have a bad Buccaneers team with some Tom Brady magic. Which of these forces is going to win out? I don't know. This could be a really ugly game, and I've been going back and forth on who's going to win it, but I'm actually going to tip my hat to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think that defense could be problematic when the Cowboys are trying to run the ball, and while I do think the offensive line of the Buccaneers is going to have a tough time with guys like Micah Parsons, Tom Brady does get the ball out quickly, and I imagine the Buccaneers' defense is going to be able to take advantage of some of Dak's mistakes. So because of that, even though it pains me, and I'm rooting for the Meteor, the Tampa Bay Bucks win. So if these predictions are correct, what you will see next week for the divisional round, you will see the Chargers taking on the Chiefs, the Bengals taking on the Bills, and over on the NFC, you'll see the Buccaneers taking on the Eagles and the Vikings taking on the 49ers. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Who do you see moving on to the divisional round in the postseason? Let me know. You can always tell me at TomGrossetComedy.com or TomGrossetComedy at all social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over Patreon.com slash TomGrossetComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grossi. And as always, go Pack Go. Five minutes before GPS.